And we're back. Sorry about that. Uh, Whoops. Can you hear us now? Yeah, yeah I mean, you should, you should be. We, we're, we're getting readings here. Uh, sorry about that. Never had that happen before. But um, you just got to remain calm and think on your feet and start troubleshooting. That's what you do when you have uh, technical difficulties. Yeah, there's nothing <clears throat> worse than technical difficulties on a live episode. Oh, man, just when we get into a groove. Dang, I thought we were doing so good. Of, the internet of, hasn't gone out in a while. Yeah, man. Uh, man. Oh, it, well. Anyway. Okay. Hopefully everyone's... Okay, they're saying yay. Yeah, they're here. Okay. Can you thank hear me now? You, thank you for good. being patient. We yeah. appreciate it. Sorry about that. Um, um, they wanted you to say, and we're back. And we're back. <laughs> uh, yeah, we... In case you want to know, for the nerds out there, put uh, put it in a different port on the computer, and the, I mean, it's been the one that we've always plugged it into. Now, now it works. Now it works. So we powered down, we powered up, we did everything. We did all the things. It's always the last thing. Right. But then you stop doing them once. You Correct. Get it. All right. So you didn't hear any of that. Welcome. Yes. Welcome. <laughs> it's. It's snowy out and here in Kentucky. Most of them know that they're already they've got snow where they are too. Someone's at fourteen okay. inches. That's crazy. Okay. Who who's good at reading lips? Who could tell us what they think we said? They were they were doing it before. Okay. Uh, while we were out. Um, so today on the episode, as we said before, and you may have lip read, we will be recapping our experience yesterday, uh, which includes the big bourbon blind taste off. But for those of you who watch our Instagram stories, we also had a private tasting at Justin's House of Bourbon. I need a drink. So we'll be covering all that, um, answering questions, talking about our experience, revisiting. Uh, we did scratch sheets before we wrote down our final answers of our, uh, judging for the competition so we'll read to you what we put down and we can all uh talk about that <laughs> uh, jose um, but for those of you who don't want to listen to us talk about all that stuff we will put the timestamps also so you can skip over the technical difficulties uh we will put those in a pinned comment after the episode yeah so <laughs> first off we owe a few cowbell cheers we do starting with jose <laughs> bourbon blind says you said bourbon blind not bourbon death that's uh, hilarious uh, bourbon jose? blind cheers Jose, uh, oh, you... There were I, a few. I think we, we... We doubled. You were doing Jose, I was doing Bourbon it's Blind. True. So now you do Bourbon, bourbon blind, blind, and I'll do Jose. Okay. Bourbon Jose blind. says, let's get nutty one more time. And nutty with technical difficulties is how we're starting this one off. Yes. Um, so. Anyway, all right. All right. Well, as we normally do, like we said, we will get into our Big Bourbon Blind recap and our recap of our tasting yesterday. Um, but first, let's start out with our What's New and Sample Shoutout segment. So, what do we have, Chad? What did you pick up from Liquor Barn? For Liquor Barn, and also welcome Perry into the chat, who's moderating for us today. He was a little bit late, so he missed all those technical difficulties. Uh, but welcome, Perry. Um, we got a Wathens Barrel Proof, which is, this is barrel number 50, so this is a, uh, a pick of theirs, mm. and uh, it's 117.4 proof, and we've always loved uh, Wathens Barrel Proof, so we're expecting great things from this one as well. Yes, for sure. So we picked that up. And so while we were at Justin's House Suburban yesterday, which for those of you who are patrons, uh, know that we won a tasting for four at Justin's and we gave away our other two spots in a drawing on Patreon, which our friend Christian Badali won. And he came down from Philadelphia with his friend Jim to partake in the tasting with us, which was yeah. awesome. Yeah. So we were tasting bourbon yesterday from 12 to 2 there. We did about five pours. And then at 3, we started our preliminaries for... Um, the big bourbon blind taste off. So it was a day full of bourbon. And then we went to OBC for dinner. It was a long day. It was great though. <laughs> but a great day. A great day. So a what, bourbon fueled day. While we were at Justin's, what yeah. did we pick up? Uh, well, our good friend Brian Booth um, turned us on to this, which is called Resilient Straight Bourbon Whiskey. It is, uh, let's see, where's, where's the proof? 107 proof. Uh, so this is distilled in Tennessee and bottled in Pembroke, Kentucky. Hmm whatever um and this is oh we get i love it when they put information on here so this is a number chore number chore, number chore. par number mm -hmm. four char uh it's 84 percent corn eight percent rye eight percent barley and cool. he was good enough to give us a taste mm -hmm. and we really liked it so we he sold us picked us picked us up a bottle yes says he's about the only one that he knows of who carries this stuff right. so if you want a bottle justin's house of bourbon that's right. And I couldn't resist a good bottle of wine that's been aged in some bourbon barrels, so I got this 100 Stories uh, Gold Rush Red. 
and it is a cask finished wine. So I'll be opening that up with a lovely meal sometime soon. Tonight might be the perfect night because it's so snowy. Excellent choice. Seems like a, you know, we'll put a fireplace video on in the background, open some wine and watch a movie. <laughs> we don't have a fireplace. Are we going to... Watch the fire on the TV? No, or it's just for ambiance in the background. So we'll have another. We'll have a TV to the side of us with a fire going, and then we'll have a movie on the other TV. Right. Monica says she loves that wine. I haven't had it yet, but I'm a big fan of the barrel aged wines. So, um, and then last but not least, yeah. we got this lovely Bourbon Pursuit series. Uh, this is episode 001. Christian, who won the tasting, brought this down for us so kindly. So we will open this up at the end of the episode. Yeah. Uh, it's 118 proof, so we want to go through. Our other stuff first. Um, That's right. Just so we don't ruin it. That's right. So. Yeah. Well, what we got, what we got I here? suppose. Do you want to? I mean, do you want to talk about what we did at Justin's yesterday much? Or we did get some really amazing pours. Brian Booth, <clears throat> like we said, put together a guided tasting for us. He, um, we kind of helped him choose which ones we wanted to take Christian and Jim through. But we did um, a 1970s early times. <clears throat> um, we did the 10 year chicken cock. The their Wathens barrel pick, their first one, mm -hmm. and Elijah Craig B518, I believe. 517. B517? I think so. I don't think so. I think you're thinking of... Um, Maybe, okay. You're thinking of the, Maybe the competition. I don't remember. Um, anyways, and then last but not least, Justin Sloan, who's one of the Justins in Justin's House of Bourbon, kindly put a celebration pour in there for us for our engagement, which was really nice. Um, it was a 1917 Kentucky Tavern. What? It was 18 years old, so it literally slept through Prohibition. It woke up in the th early 1930s and was like, what happened? Yeah, what? Well, hey, hey, what did I miss? <laughs> Glad I survived. It's like being in an alien movie, in a sci-fi movie, where they like go in one of those capsules yeah. and then wake up 80 years later. A hibernation, um, sleep. Right. So that was very interesting. So it was a really exciting tasting that we got to go through. A lot of yeah. different flavor profiles. And it was really awesome. Like they have a speakeasy back room. It's a hidden door. Um, so we were back in that room doing the tasting. It was a lot of fun. Did you tell people to check out our story on Instagram? I did, but it's I probably gone now. It's 24 hours. So. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. You That's will be gone. able to see some of our bourbon blind posts, yeah. though, the taste yeah. off. Yeah. Um, so... After that, we drove over to the Summit at Fritz Farm, which is in Lexington, and they have a place called The Barn, which is like an upscale food hall, mm -hmm. I would say. Yeah. Um, and in there, there's a bar called Whiskey Bear, and they were the ones with Kentucky for Kentucky hosting the uh, Taste Off sponsored by Buffalo Trace, uh, which is why we have this Buffalo Trace <laughs> and this glass. They gave us a little fun pack um, full of stuff. Yeah, a little fun pack. Yeah, a little, a little fun pack. A little fun pack. Um, and then they gave us a reference sheet for the Buffalo Trace so that we could taste it and understand kind of the, it was sort of a marker for where the grading was standing mm -hmm. so that we could understand in comparison what we were tasting that was blind. How did it fare against the Buffalo Trace? And that could kind of help us pick right. uh, categories. Because obviously, uh, you know, what you pick up on a bourbon is subjective. So kind of to curb that, they give you the Buffalo Trace as like a control, and then they say what notes have been picked up on it, you know, by this, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Judging if, committee, I would say. Yeah, and Freddie Johnson from Buffalo Trace was there. The, he was. the world's best uh, tour guide. He's a third generation tour guide at Buffalo Trace. So, you know, you can be like, well, if they pick up aromas of leather, mint, nutmeg, raisin, pear, apricot, honeysuckle, and pecan, then this blind sample... Does it have any of those? I could see, you know, yeah. where they pick it up. And, you know, so they... Appearance, nose, mouthfeel, flavor, mm -hmm. final assessment, which is the proof and the age range, and then the bonus, which you could guess the distillery, the brand, and the expression. But that's a lot to put down on paper. <laughs> and you had 45 minutes about to do two samples. So the preliminaries... We went through, you get two samples, you fill this paper out. Yeah. Front for one, back yeah. for the other. And then at the finals, we did two more. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it was really great. I mean, we got like a little welcome pack. It included these t-shirts, some glassware and stuff. Uh, and then these little cute <laughs> glasses. I love them a lot. Um, yeah. And yeah, it was fun. So the preliminaries were great. And we'll talk about... You want to go ahead and, and talk about... Um, the results? The results? Let's yeah. do it. So we tied for second. Hi. Some people said third, which is, I guess, true if you're the tied for second. 
But so basically we had an exact match score with a uh, second place, which was Jason Craig and Ron Van, Van Heron. I think that's how you say it. Um, that's what we'll say. So we had the exact same score. So they had to do a tiebreaker and it was basically like came down to the wire of some of the notes that we made, like whose were more in mm. line with this sheet. Um, yeah. And I think they beat us by one. Yeah. So we tied for second, tied for and second. in the tiebreaker, they got the second place prize, and we got the third place prize. Yeah. So I could see how that would be confusing. But That's fine. That's we were fine. very proud. Yes. Um, and then first place went to, um, Ma like, I really hope I'm getting to say this right, Masik Tagaruk. Masik Tagaruk, yes. Masik Tagaruk. And um, he totally deserved to win because he identified not only the brand and the expression of the fourth um, bottle, but he even identified the batch number. Yeah. Which so, is like insane. The fourth uh, ended up being Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, and he even knew that it was B517. So he deserves to he win. Totally he totally deserves to win. He beat us by two points. Mm -hmm. um, he got 42 and we got 40. Yeah. And first place was also, besides this awesome barrel head, you can, which see, is in it, our thumbnail. You can see it in our thumbnail, and you can also see, see him. <sighs> Two thousand dollars for first cash place. Prize. Yeah, yeah that cash nice. money. Can you think of how much bourbon that would have bought? A lot, a lot of bourbon. Dang. A lot of bourbon. This close. Yeah. Two points away. But there's always next year. Yeah. Yeah. So, so let's go. talk about the preliminaries and get out the pours and mm -hmm. talk about what we guessed and what it actually was. Yes. Uh, so let's start with sample number one of the preliminaries, which is mm -hmm. bullet. Bullet. So. Yes. Ooh. Was actually bullet, which we're we're kind of low on here. We are. Do you want to do bullet in one or? Sure. Both? So our guess was four rows of small batch. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Four roses makes bullet. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> one day. Very close. Bullet will make bullet, but they're they're not there. And they're both ninety proof. And they're both ninety proof. So in a way, we guessed the distillery. Yeah. We were right on the distillery, but. So we got this distillery right, but the brand and expression wrong. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah. Um, but for notes, we said appearance was an amber color, medium viscosity. Uh, medium full body, medium plus finish, medium complexity. <laughs> Lots of mediums. Moderate intensity. Yeah. And then for the nose, we picked up uh, notes of mint, honey, raisin, banana, pecan, and honeysuckle. I, yeah, I can see that. Um, we also wrote down uh, pear, maybe apple, maybe fig and maybe tea leaf, but you could only pick five total. Yeah. So we had to write down everything we thought we smelled and then narrow it down to what what was a, I can maybe pick this up to I definitely get this. Yeah. And again, going back and comparing against the mm -hmm. Buffalo Trace for reference. Yeah. Oh, Mash and Drum, you mm -hmm. said, hey guys, missed you the last couple of Sundays. Glad to see you again. Cheers. Cheers, cheers Mash and Drum. Cheers to you, Jason. Ooh, that was a delicate. Cowbell cheers. Cowbell cheers. <laughs> so, yeah, and you know, I'm actually really glad that we had 45 minutes to do this because we kind of, we almost took the full 45 we minutes on, on both yeah. of these. We were very... But, I mean, as you can see, it's a lot... It's of, a lot to think about. It's a lot of categories here. And I between mean, two... You, go ahead. Oh, well, between two people who have somewhat different palettes, it took a lot for us to not just agree on something, but to hear what the other one had to say both write down our answers and then narrow it down to the ones that we were the most sure about. Yeah, um, yeah. But I think that that helped, being able to bounce stuff off each other. Yeah. I mean, it started with appearance. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we were yeah. we were doing this, looked like a bunch of dorks. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, we would say, okay, and again, that's where the Buffalo Trace reference card came into play because we, so like, we were like, well, if they call this an amber color... Then what's this? Uh, it this looks, looks pretty exactly amber. the same. And I think so. that's, what we, that's what we call it. Yeah. Vic viscosity... Uh, intensity of aroma, then you go to your aromas, you have spice, sweet, fruit, floral, wood, nut, earth, mm -hmm. which is all one. You know, so it's a flavor wheel, but I've never seen a flavor wheel, you know, in like this type of orientation, no. which is actually really cool. It's nice, yeah. yeah. I yeah. think sometimes the map of the wheel can get a little intimidating, and this just seems more like multiple choice on a test, like there's no wrong answer, just right. check which ones you right. 
think, you know. And again, that's where it becomes tough because it's like, hey, it's subjective. But then you've got this Buffalo Trace reference sheet to be like, okay, if they're pulling this out of that, then I'm going to go in this direction. So I still get the mint and the honey and the banana on this. Oh, I'm smelling the four roses. <laughs> right, I know. This is the uh, the but get, the bullet. But I get those things too. I get the banana. I get the mint. It's very close. Yeah, this is just I don't know, a little less. Yeah. Intense. Agreed. It seems, but I don't know. It was, we're proud that we got the right distillery. Show them what we won, Chad. I'll do that. Well, what did they win, Chad? But wait, there's more. <laughs> Let's put this away. So, our third place prize. Tied for second, whatever. Tied, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Tied for second. Uh, so, we got some bicycle poker cards, which these are bourbon themed. That They're awesome. Like, the yeah. kings are pouring or like stirring a. Yeah, stirring, like a stirring the mash. or something. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, so, this is Sarah's same, same shirt. Same one of these. Oh, I won this shirt too. It oh, says, yeah. uh, like Kentucky bourbon, I get better with age. <laughs> there you go. Uh, got some y'all koozies. Got some socks. Southern socks. It says bourbon on them and has bottles. And this is all Kentucky for Kentucky gear, yeah. except I think the cards are. Yeah, bicycle. Yeah. And then from Buffalo Trace, uh, we got this lovely gift set. <laughs> Tell them what they've won. <laughs> so we've got a. Ooh. Buffalo Trace uh, stir stick with a buffalo on top. We got some bitters. Got a copper jigger. A muddler. Muddler. Bar towel, ice mold, two coasters, and two glasses. Two glasses. So that's that's pretty awesome. Yeah. And like we said, Freddie Johnson was there. Buffalo Trace was the sponsor, so he was hanging out all day, and he's just a delight. Yeah. So we'll post a picture with him later. So do you think we were, we were on with our uh, impressions here? I think they're pretty darn close. I think the Four Roses has a little bit more spice notes to it. Like, I just get a little bit more clove and cinnamon oh, yeah. than the Bullet. The Bullet's a tiny bit thinner, I guess I would say. Um, but they're yeah. extremely close. I mean, blinded together, I don't know that I could tell you the difference. That's what this one is. So. Um, yeah, I get more spice on the, uh, the Four Roses small batch. And I would guess that it's a higher proof, but mm -hmm. these are both 90. Yeah. Um, we guessed, I think we guessed. We guessed 80, 86 to 91, which yeah. they're both 90, so that's right. Mm -hmm. And we guessed four to eight years, which, which is also they're right. small batches. So. Yeah. So we got that right. Um, yeah, so you have to rate the mouthfeel. Um, the finish, is it short, short plus, medium, medium plus, or long? We put medium plus, which mm -hmm. I think that's. It's. Yeah. Pretty accurate. Todd. Todd Cooper. Congrats on 17,000. Thank, Thank you, you, Todd. We're Thank gonna you, hit 17.5 soon. Very Cabell, exciting. Cowbell, cheers to you, sir. Um, complexity, how complex is it? We put it was medium. medium. Well, because the Buffalo Trace complexity was also uh, listed at medium, medium, and we taste them back to back, yeah, and we're so like, a lot of... I feel like they're equal yeah. you know, in complexity, so. Yeah. Um, we never got an answer key, so we don't actually know what the right score was. We just know that we were mostly right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, shall we move on to the next one? Yeah. Um, yeah, so intensity, delicate, mild, moderate, or powerful. We put moderate for this one. And then in the, in the tasting, you could also pick five, just like in the aromas. So we went with tobacco, honey, uh, banana... You know what else we want? We don't have them all. Here? Yeah. No, we we did uh, tobacco, honey, banana, tea leaf, and herbal. Oh, I forgot about these yeah. down here. So under wood slash nut slash earth, you have oak, cedar, pine, walnut, pecan, hay, tea leaf, and herbal. No peanuts. No, just nutty for Chad. They didn't yeah, they didn't say. Ooh, way. it's nutty. I was like, oh, obviously mm -hmm. I didn't write this. So we put tea leaf and herbal. I stand behind those. I'm sure if we really wanted to, they would give us the answer key. I just don't think they had time to like pass it out. They may sure. even post the answer key. Um, again, that's Whiskey Bear who sponsored it. So we could probably ask them for the answer key just to see where we went wrong. Between the two, and I don't blame them for doing this, I think Four Roses holds the better stuff than they do to give to, uh, to Bullet. 
I agree. I would do the same thing. <laughs> yeah, for real. Um, so yeah, that was sample number one. Boom, there you go. So we will put these aside. Mm -hmm. Sample number two, which is the whoop, opposite side of the page here. Um, so this one ended up being actually Old Forester 100 proof. Mm -hmm. And we said Old Forester, yay. 86, 86 proof. proof. Uh, uh, we just don't drink a lot of Old Forester, like that's not 1920. So but I I'm think, proud of, my, of ourselves for getting. I'm proud again, for getting the distillery. The distillery and I the tasted brand it right. and I was like, there's no way this is not Brown Foreman. Um, so once I figured, like that was part of our process too, is once we could kind of get a feel of, okay, what, what brand does this taste like? What distillery does this taste like? Then it was easier to say, okay, well, if we think it's 90 to 100 proof and we think it's from Brown Foreman and we get these notes, what could that be? Correct you know, time. That's what it could be. Yeah. Like, there's only so many things that could be 90 to 100 proof that are from Brown Foreman. And if it's not Woodford, then what is it? It could be Old Forester. Yeah. And that's how we got there. We sort of um, just narrowed it down as we went. No, Adam, I don't know the age difference between the Four Roses and the Bullet. It's not. Neither of them are age stated. And... Um, you know, there it might be. I would guess maybe there might be a year's difference between them in there, but mm -hmm. it, it might be exactly the same. I'm not sure. It's also a lot of saints talk going on in the uh, in the chat. You want to just share? <laughs> sure. Since we're gonna do some more. Oh yeah, that's right. We couldn't find our 86. We couldn't find our 86. It's around here somewhere. <laughs> no. Sorry. Oh no, bourbon problems. Too many bottles. Mm, Can't find do? the ones we're looking for. What are we gonna do? Yeah, Perry did say. Uh, Woodford, which would be the the right uh, the right brand. It, yeah, and he was right about Brown Foreman. Brown Foreman, which um, is Woodford Reserve, and also um, uh, this guy. Yep. Old Forester. Forester. There we go. So when we looked at this one, we said for color that it was gold. It's we a did this. a slight a slight mm -hmm. bit lighter than uh, the amber that the Buffalo Trace was. Yeah. Um, and for viscosity, we said light once we tasted it. Um, for intensity as far as aroma, we said, we put mild. I agree with that. Uh, mm -hmm. And we also said it had some orange blossom, yeah, nutmeg, definitely. maple, honey. These are all of our initial notes. Maple, honey, chocolate, apricot, apple, orange blossom. Did I ever say that? Mm -hmm. Tea leaf and herbal. So then we had to take that like eight or whatever that is. Down to five. Pair it down to five, which I don't know... Um, I think we picked nutmeg, yep. orange blossom. Yep. I want to say we picked apricot, and I know we picked chocolate. I think it was tea leaf. I think it was tea leaf also. See, I wish I had circled them. Oh, well. We got our eight, so we know. <laughs> um, and how, then... How could we miss the proof, though, Sarah? Ugh. I don't know. How could we miss the proof? It was tough. That Buffalo Trace is such a solid 90 proof. I think when we tried them back to back, we are like, man, this just isn't as intense as the Buffalo Trace well, on the palette. Well, a lot of people, including us, said of that first round, the Buffalo Trace Control was the best thing <laughs> that was offered. So yeah, I think, you know, and also, and the other thing was Now like, I kind of get it more. But we had, well, we'd sure. been drinking all day also. <laughs> sure. So take that into account. Yeah. Um, oh, I totally get the apple. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's like, there was a lot of people there from like, like some bourbon society and, and people who were more like affluent in bourbon and they're like Perry was there Perry and, and Iverson and, and people who were just like man I just I'm not really usually drinking you know Bullet or or Old Forester or you know the the other two that we'll revere revere here in a minute <laughs> and it's just like yeah it's just not our wheelhouse and Sarah and I trained for like a day yeah maybe we did two blinds each. In one day, and then we did one the night before that. Yeah. So actually, she. Or did I blind you? You did with with uh, four roses. You blinded me with. Uh, I blind you with four roses small batch. You blind me with Old Forester 1920 in one of them. Yeah, that was probably a mistake. Like they would have had 1920 in there, but yeah. who knows? Who knows? Um, but we weren't really thinking at that point. We were just like, "Hey, can you guess what this can is?" You, just your see your reasoning. Then when you get there, you're like. All right, they're probably not picking real expensive bourbons right. because they've got a 
you know, give it to all these people. people. And if we paid fifty dollars for the entry fee and we got these shirts and these glasses and all this stuff, then how much bourbon could they really afford to give us? So I think maybe we tried to use too much logic. In retrospect, we should have been pouring Woodford for ourselves. We should have been pouring, you know, Old Forester. And uh, I think the obviously the Four Roses small batch was a good thing to mm-hmm. to pour to train with, but Definitely. we should have also done Bullet. You know, yeah. it's like what are the, what are the what are the staples? What what would people now we know for there? next year? Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, um, but what was I gonna say? I'm not sure. Don't remember. Uh, some people are saying we've been training for years, and I actually will <laughs> say I credit doing the show to obviously to being able to pick up on. Some of these lower proof things that we don't normally drink, like, no, I don't normally drink this, but we have had it before, and we talk about these things so much, the di- the different profiles of s- different distilleries, that I think that helped our recall. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Doug. Doug says he is proud of our investigational skills. Well, we'll we're cheers proud to you, of, Doug. of your super chat, sir. We are. Cowbell <laughs> cheers. A loud cowbell loud. cheers for you. Thank you for that. Um, uh, so this kind of got... Should we should we go to our poll now? Um, I guess let's go to our poll. Yeah. Uh, first, we had a question. Carl Ivy. A couple of people have asked. Okay. Um, Cor- Corey and Carl Ivy have Corey. asked. Have we done a 100 proof flight fight? I think that's on the docket for this year. We've been talking about doing a, a 100 proof or a bottled and bond flight fight yeah. for a while, especially because we want to find something to replace our beloved Heaven Hill <sighs> BIB. So, yeah. R I P. Um, yeah. Anyways, so let's go to the polls. If you guys didn't see, uh, and you can go ahead and hit refresh because in case anyone else has chimed in. So we put a poll out about an hour ago um, on YouTube that uh, asks if uh, who who has uh, hit that read more tab. Oh. Right there. Um, do you ever blind taste your bourbons? So the options were yes, but never double blind. Yep, and even double blind. Nope, never tried my bourbon blind, but I want to. Nope, but if I did, I would totally crush it. And no, that scares me. Too much pressure. <laughs> so what? what's our results here, Sarah? Uh, so 37% of people, the, uh, that was the second answer, was yes, but never double blind. So you like to do blind fights, but you like to know what your options are. Or, you know, I mean, it's pretty hard to do it's double really blind. It's really hard to do double you gotta blind. You got to ask your friend to come over and choose from your bourbon selection and just hoping that they don't pick like that bottle that you're like, no, what are you doing? <laughs> um, but the the most common answer was, nope, never tried my bourbon blind, but I want to. Okay. Um, so good for you. So you want to explore. Some, that was 44%. Some curious people out there. And then 13% said, yep, and even double blind. So we Baller. have a couple of people out there that have done that. Nice. And then, nope, but if I did, I would totally crush it. 2%. Only 2%. We love your confidence. <laughs> and 3% said, no, that scares me. Too much pressure. 5%. Ah, oh, that's a five, not that's a three. That's a five, Sarah. That's right. <laughs> All right, back to our, back to our chat there. Oh, and Joseph Brazo. Joseph gave us a Joseph. super chat for five dollars. It's not the same one. You can't just be mixing up those things. I know. Cheers, Joseph. Cheers, Joseph. It's just fun to say Joseph I like know. that, even if it's not. It doesn't mean the anything. Same Joseph. <laughs> when you do that. <laughs> um. Yes. So. Anyways, I mean, oh, well, I will we say, have 220 watching with us now. Welcome, 220. Welcome, 220. Uh, DNT Blues, Blues Corner. Congrats on 17K, he says. Uh, cheers to continued growth with all of your endeavors. Cheers Thank to you, you sir. sir. And your YouTube channel. There we go. <laughs> Check him out on YouTube. Yeah, DNT sure. Blues Corner. Give him a sub. Um, say hi. All right. So... Is there anything else we want to say about well, this? Well, I would just say that this doesn't taste like a 100 proofer. Is that a I good thing? I don't think it tastes Is like that a 100 proofer either. I don't know. What, what do you think? If I'm drinking a 100 proofer, I kind of want to know I'm drinking a 100 mm-hmm. proofer. I don't know. It's uh, it's just kind of muted. I still get a lot of the fruity notes in here mm-hmm. with like a little bit of black pepper. Um, someone asked before, how are we getting like honeysuckle and orange blossom? So I think our logic behind that was... Seeing the options that were in front of us and trying to pick out which ones we wanted to fill in bubbles, I was like, I kind of get some orange, but I'm also getting floral. Yeah. I don't normally go around chewing on orange blossoms, but I can imagine what an orange blossom would taste like, and so we would pick it. Yeah. Um, Again, that could be one of our wrong ones that may have cost us the tiebreaker. I'm not sure. Um, Well, you know, and again, going back to Buffalo Trace, which I'm sure a lot of people out there have had or might be sipping on with us right now, they said for taste, uh, oak, vanilla, and caramel. Mm-hmm. That's kind of the given. But then they say black, black pepper, clove, 
tobacco, leather, which is kind of unusual for a, I mean, Buffalo Trace isn't young, it's, but you know, it, mm -hmm. it's around seven to nine years, I believe. Cereal, apricot, honeysuckle, and cedar. So, so that's like from a master taster, maybe from Harlan Wheatley himself, the master distiller. I don't know if they maybe. I think that was like the committee that, all combined. It might have been the. Yeah. It might have been yeah the committee. So they had like we haven't talked about that. They had about twenty different bourbons. Yes. And they had a small committee, and they went through and they did this for ev for every every each of, of the those 20. twenty bourbons, and then only one person picked the their four. whiskey bear. Pick the four that were going to be used. So he was the only person who uh, who knew. No one else knew. So, yeah. which is very smart of him because word does travel. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So, all right, let's move on. Uh, uh, here we go. Oh, we'll use yours. This next one. Okay. Next card, please. Next. So this was the finals. Um, so our first sample of the finals was. Woodford. Woodford Reserve. And what did we think it was? Woodford Reserve. We're right. <laughs> That's right. We got it right. We were. Which, um, and that is awesome because that means you're automatically getting the proof right. The age and the bonus. The age and the bonus. Yeah, so we got the distillery, the brand, and the expression right. The proof and the age range right. Uh, so then it comes down to the more subjective things, which is everything here. Right. The appearance, the viscosity, which is hard to say. <laughs> the intensity and the aroma. The aromas themselves, the mouthfeel, the finish, the complexity, the intensity, the taste, all those things. Yep, that's right. <laughs> there you go. So, um, Monica says she loves that Buffalo Trace sponsored it and featured other bourbons, such a supportive industry. Yeah, for sure. I mean, they, it would be too obvious, I think, if it was just like, we're going to do a blind taste off and there are only Buffalo Trace. Like, I mean, I guess they just were like, we're going to be talking about a lot of bourbon. Would you like to be present and make your brand? Yeah, front well, that center? would have just and they supplied the prizes it way and stuff. too much. Yeah, it would have been too narrow. Yeah. So yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So let's talk about this one. So we called this one a deep copper because again, we were just kind of comparing it to our Buffalo Trace sample, and and we're like, it's a like it's, slightly darker, it's one notch higher. But we wouldn't call it mahogany. It's not like no. red enough. Uh, viscosity. We said it was light. Mm -hmm. Did the sheet list mouthfeel in quotes? No, it didn't. <laughs> no, but I, with my pen, I put mouthfeel around it and said it in that voice. <laughs> Barry said, um, Jason is still, I drew it on mine. <laughs> yeah, there you go. No. Mouthfeel. <laughs> yeah, I would say that's a light viscosity. Uh, the aroma, we put mild. I still stand behind that. I think it's kind of mild. Yeah, really mild. Uh, I mean, if they call Buffalo that's Trace moderate, moderate yeah, the this Woodford is lighter. I think is, yeah. is, is, is a little bit lighter. So, in aromas, again, you can only pick five. Initially, when we went through, we said coconut, question mark, raisin. Um, we did have pear in there. But then we crossed it out. Crossed it out. Peach, berry. For floral, we put rose. For wood, we put cedar. And I think we kept all those except the pear and the, and the coconut. Yeah, I think we did get rid of that. Yeah. Uh, so, nothing under the spice category. No, but I wouldn't call Woodford a spicy bourbon. No, it doesn't. And that's kind of by design. It's not supposed to jut out in any particular uh, yeah. particular ways. But that was the nose. Um, for the uh, taste, we put clove, tobacco, cacao, maple, mm -hmm. apricot, cedar, and herbal. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we narrowed down from there. Yeah. Yeah. I stand behind all those. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I really get the maple and the apricot now. It's good. I mean, I've never hated Woodford. I just, I've, I have a special respect for Woodford as a great way to get someone. It's a gateway bourbon, right? Uh, you, I think we you, called it a stair-step bourbon a You lot. breadcrumb them into <laughs> bourbon, and yeah. this is like the first one that you're like, come on, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, well, I know for me, like, it was the first... You know what? I'm going to loosen the purse strings a little bit and I'm going to plop down 30 bucks for a bourbon. You know, it's Woodford because it's a pretty bottle. It's got a lot of brands, um, um, not loyalty, but brands. Recognition. Recognition. Thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, out there. So it's like, yeah, you know what? Woodford. Um, but then, like I just said, Woodford is designed on that flavor wheel not to really jut out too much in any particular area. So, you know, in your bourbon journey, shout out. Um, you're like, you know what? I kind of like nutty bourbons. Yeah. I kind of like 
rye spice. I like, you know, whatever it may be. So then you gravitate. What? Do you love how he listed nutty first? Because that's what he loves. <laughs> I'm talking about me. I know. I'm me. So then you're like, let me find that. Ooh, hey, Booker's. That's nutty. Or, you yeah. know, or uh, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Talk about spice, you know, a mm -hmm. kick in the glass. You know, whatever it is, you start going to those and you might, you might leave this behind. Others might stick with it. And there's no right or wrong. It's whatever, you know, you do you. We always say that. Yeah. You love you what you, you love. For us, we kind of, you know, we still go back to it. Obviously, we have a bottle. Um, but it's not our flavor profile no. so much. But I like to have a bottle around, you know. Absolutely. And it is a crowd favorite. It is a crowd favorite. A um, non-bourbon aficionado comes over the house. Like, would you like some bourbon? Yeah, Sure, you would you Lifford? like? You got him Lifford? Always. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um... David asks, uh, where did he go? Do you have any interest in creating your version of a tasting chart similar to what you used at the event? Chad was just talking about this earlier. Yes. Uh, potentially. Yes, potentially. You could see us writing a My Bourbon Journey book and including something like that in there. Just having chapters for like cooking with bourbon, entertaining with bourbon, pairing bourbon, we'll nosing bourbon, My bourbon chewing journey. bourbon. Yeah, yeah. Well, we could call it something else. <laughs> All right. Jose, Jose. Nutty drink, everybody. <laughs> Nutty Squad leader. Nutty Squad 2019. Yes. But that would be fun, though, to have something like that. Do Absolutely. you want any more? Uh, sure. Which brings us to our last bourbon. And this is where they finally turned it up a notch. Um, and, you know, we were kind of, I think, sort of expecting it to, to be something. You're like, man, these have all been sort of low proof and not super duper complex. Again, like... Our control with Woodford or Woodford with uh, Buffalo Trace, mm -hmm. we're like we're kind of liking this. Yeah, we really it's, liked it's, it. It's kind of hard um, to put that as your control because at 90 proof, it's like hey, it packs a little punch. It's you know, it's uh, pretty complex, and, right? And all that. So they pulled out the big guns for yep. the last one, and we knew right off the bat that it was a high proof. We mm -hmm. were like, this is like a barrel proof to us. So yeah, absolutely, we were trying. Our mistake was putting too much logic into it and yeah, thinking we thought ourselves out of it what's an affordable barrel proof or full proof that they would give us that would be within the price range and blah 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 and is available and we <laughs> thought that it would be this guy i don't know and it kind of had it was this. a or we talked ourselves into thinking it had a barton type of we did feel. yeah we're like you know buffalo trace is here we buffalo put trace and barton lemon on the sheet which yeah. i think that fruity note kind of reminded us of um the 1792 so but okay. yeah and and i'll take full responsibility on saying i am the that, one who also suggested that it was well you did suggest 1792 but i was one who was like yeah man they're not gonna put like Elijah Craig barrel proof in here for all these people. Let's think of what's like the most What's the most uh, affordable? Affordable foolproof. Yeah, you're right. It is that 1792. Yeah. So we just overthought it and I guess there is your your lesson kids. Don't uh, think too much. Don't overthink it. Go with your gut. Yeah. Go with um, your gut. So this is the B517 which is the one that uh let's see. Mossick. He guessed um not only that it was Elijah Craig barrel proof, but that it was B batch B five one seven. Yeah. Which baller. on that alone, yeah, baller. He deserves baller. to win. Yeah. Good. I was like, Mike dropped. Yeah, exactly. I couldn't have been prouder of him. Yeah. Bless his heart. <laughs> you deserve those two extra you points. You do, and that yeah. two grand. Yeah, exactly. I was like, I bow down to your palate. <laughs> totally. He actually said that he had been dissecting this one a lot lately, and that's ah. he said it was just luck that it was in the uh, the offerings. So. There you go. But good for him. There you go. Yeah. Um, so, let's know. Sarah has the Elijah Craig. Um, well, now she has both. <laughs> but over here in this hand is the But just nose them together and tell me that those are far apart. Okay. Not far. I think this one is is more tame. It is more tame. This but one's more turned up. I could <laughs> totally... We're not like completely off base. It's not like no. we said it was Booker's or something. No. I mean, and the proof is even 0.8 proof points off. 0.8 in we proof. We were very close on yeah. that. Yeah. So that means we would have got the proof range right. Um, which we put 110 plus, which was right. And we probably missed it on the age range because I don't think this one is 9 to 14 years. 
It's not age stated. Oh, I thought we put four to eight. Did we? I can't remember. I crossed no. it out and then we put it back. Oh, you're right. If we had thought it was this, we would have put that. That's right. We crossed it out. We put four we'll to put... eight, so it probably is this, not yeah. this. So that hurt us. <sighs> anyway, we said deep, we're not deep mahogany, just mahogany. And I would say that's true for, well, more for it's this It's more one. for this one. This is, I think, still like an amber or a, a copper. I would put a deep copper slash mahogany if we could, but we can't. <laughs> Jose uh, says, double nosing, the nose knows what the nose knows. The shadow knows. Cheers to you, Jose. Thank you for that. Viscosity, I think we went medium. Yeah, which, which probably should have been our indicator that, I don't know. Like, I feel like this one's less viscous than this one. I don't know. This one's, this one's pretty, uh. Again, I don't think that tasting bourbon since noon helped us. No. <laughs> I'm not going to blame it on that completely. I'm still very proud of what we did. Yeah. But I, I don't think it would, it helped us. <laughs> uh, and Christian and Jim uh, came to hang out too. Uh, Christian participated and did his own test. Jim hung out. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I would kind of call these the same level of viscosity. But I think this is sweeter. This one. Yeah. The yeah. foolproof is sweeter. But again, not completely off base, I no, don't think. No, no, not completely. Um, nose aroma, we said moderate. Mm -hmm. um, we said notes of butterscotch, raisin, chocolate, lemon, and peach. Yeah. Um, which I stand by, <laughs> not going to lie. I really get the lemon and the uh, peach and the chocolate. Butterscotch too, but it just depends on where you're looking, I think. This one, I would say, has lemon. I lemon. could get the peach on this too. Mm. Not as strong on the chocolate. I totally get the lemon. Yeah, I could get... Not the chocolate. No. I could get raisin on this one though. I don't get butterscotch on that one. No. Yeah. Um, for mouthfeel. Mouthfeel. We put a medium full and a long finish. Yep. Uh, and a medium complexity, which I think the long finish should have... If we had thought harder about it and had more time, we were like down to the wire. Yeah. I think we would have remembered that this finish wasn't as long when we did it on our barrel proof flight fight, but we weren't thinking that way. Um, what? Um, yeah. So I don't know. It, it was, it was tough and it gets tough when you're dealing with a barrel proof because it can, the more you taste it, the more it, it, it gets harder to get because your tongue starts to get kind of fried. So. But anyway, on the, where'd we leave it? Taste? Yes. We wrote down black pepper, cinnamon. We initially had mint, but we nixed that one. Uh, chocolate and lemon. So we were echoing a lot of our aromas there. And then we put pine. I still the get the pine, the lemon, and the chocolate for sure. Yeah. And some black pepper. <laughs> uh, Chad on here says two drinks for mouthfeel instead of nutty. <laughs> maybe it should be one drink for mouthfeel and two drinks for nutty. Yeah, maybe. Since, you know, we love nutty more. Ooh, yeah. Definitely get that black pepper and the cinnamon. Mm -hmm. The chocolate's there in the finish. That lemon note. The lemon is just like bright and hangs out. I yeah, think that's why we out. crossed the mint out because we yeah. were like, that brightness isn't mint. It's yeah. more lemony. It does have sort of a minty finish though. Yeah. And I stick by the pine. I yeah. stick by the pine as well. Yeah. I think we decided it wasn't minty. It was more evergreen. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Now, 1792. Ooh. Not really lemon. <clears throat> no, no lemon there. More mild. I would have called this flavor intensity moderate instead of powerful. I don't know. After having those three other ones, and then having, if it was this one, let's try. We these. would have been like, I don't know, that's pretty powerful. Well, this is moderate. Is that not one notch Ooh, higher? You're right. Yeah. You're right. We would have stuck. It with is powerful. still powerful. It's just not as powerful as this one. This one should be like powerful. XL. I don't know. <laughs> powerful AF. plus. AF. Yeah, powerful AF. <laughs> if we were actually doing this one, I would have said maybe some raisin or fig. Um, the chocolate isn't really there. No. I definitely uh, get that dark fruit, though. Yeah, maybe some berry or apricot. 
And the wood, I don't think it's a eh, pine would be there. Not so much. Yeah. So this is the one we were complete misses on. We said distillery, Barn 1792, Brand 1792, and Expression Full Proof. Uh, all of which were wrong. Otherwise, we guessed the other three distilleries correctly. So three out of four distilleries. Which is good, I think. Yeah. Um, knowing, being able to identify profiles is good. I'm a little disappointed in myself that I didn't identify this as Heaven Hill. But what can you do? <laughs> I know. You can only be so good, right? And it was the last pour of the day. I don't know. I'm yeah. not that mad at myself. I'm proud of how we did. We had eaten. We're coming back falafel next year. Falafel by then. We falafel. Had eaten, not falafel. A crepe. Crepe. You know what falafel was from? Oh, from that show. From the show you. Who's watching you on Netflix? We're about eight episodes in so far. It's really creepy, but it's like Dexter in that you're cheering for the bad guy a little bit. <laughs> so you're like, no, don't break up with him. But then you, at the same time, you're like, no, girl, run. He's a stalker. Run, girl. <laughs> we got into it. It's yeah. it's fun. It's like Dexter. Mm -hmm. Um Yeah. Anyways, that's a, besides the point. <laughs> but um Yeah. Yeah. I we had, had french fries. We we ate, we snacked a lot yesterday. So, yeah. I don't know if it was the food or the long day of drinking or maybe we just deserved to tie for second. Mhm. Mm but we're coming for them next year. Masik, you better be ready. I'm <laughs> coming for that 2000. We're going to do a training montage. Yeah, we will. Now we're going to get flagged. Whoops. Yeah. <laughs> because our singing was so perfect yeah. that they're like, this is the recording. Right, exactly. So I think we should go ahead go ahead and get to that Pursuit series. Yeah, I, yep. I feel the same. I feel the same. All right. Save these for later. Now, again... Christian, who was our guest yesterday and enjoyed all of the activities awesome with us. Awesome guy, so was Jim. Uh, and Jim. Came, they flew all the way down from Philly, from Philly to spend the weekend down here. Just for this. this I awesome. mean, not just for it. They did other stuff. Yeah. But it was very awesome of them. Yeah. We'll grab a little bit of this. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who are curious, this is the Pursuit series. Uh, uncut and unfiltered. It's called the Episode 001 Batch from Tennessee, aged 11 years and 118 proof. Yeah, so this is the Bourbon Pursuit podcast, um, which we met at Bourbon and Beyond. Very nice fellas. This oh, is their... Uh, Eric Black, $10.01 for the Episode 001 notes. Looking for comparison. Well, all right. Cheers, Eric. Cheers to you, Eric. And also Dan. Uh, good afternoon, all. Currently working on some Joseph Magnus cast strength. Cheers. Ooh, Ooh, we like that nice. one. Nice. Enjoy that, Enjoy. Dan. Hey, we met an Eric yesterday at uh, at the summit. I wonder if that's the same. Oh Eric. yeah, we did. We did meet Eric yesterday at the at the but competition. But then Brian Brennicky comes in saying, "Drinking Pursuit series with you. Love it. We love that." <coughs> Cheers to you, Brian. So. <clears throat> See what we got going here. I need uh, maybe another cracker. Okay, go for it. And some water. <laughs> ben Thompson says barrel proof makes me makes me make way more like what? <laughs> barrel proof makes me make way more likely to make bad decisions. I think you got one extra make in there, but I agree with you. Welcome to reading with Sarah. Bad decisions. Huh. Sarah can read. Did you know? Um, so I haven't gotten up this entire episode, which I usually do. So I'm gonna go ahead and stand up. Okay. Goodbye. Walk over here. Okay. I guess I'll enjoy a cracker while you're gone. Since, you know, we had a little bit of technical difficulties. Mm, true, difficulties true. We did have some technical difficulties, so we'll go into a little bit of overtime. A little bit of overtime. All right. Jose also wants Bourbon Night scorecards. All right, we'll work see? on it. See? Yeah. See? See? Did I ever say no, I don't want to? No. <laughs> I was just meaning, like, when will we find time to design this beautiful card? And also, maybe we can talk to them and see, like, what they recommend as well. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, just pull something like this together. I mean, <clears throat> it'd be fun. All right. So, let's use this card here. What would you say the appearance of this is? I would say... I would say deep copper. Deep copper, indeed. Or amber. I can't tell. I would say deep copper with a waving of mahogany, but... <laughs> oh. Hello! Hello! <laughs> um, intensity... Aroma. I'm gonna go moderate. Moderate. Agreed. Agreed. Viscosity. This will require well, I don't know yet. a, a uh, taste. Ooh, I'm gonna go heavy. That's pretty viscous. Yeah. Pro tip, if you want to get a better aroma, go ahead and take a sip. Mm-hmm. 
It ha- sometimes helps me put my finger on exactly yeah. what I'm tasting. So. Oh, should we? Um, yeah, we should totally share with them what um, um, Freddie said about tasting. So mm-hmm. he said, I hadn't heard this before from Freddie. Freddie is just a wealth of knowledge. Freddie He's Johnson, got so Buffalo much Trace. knowledge. Yeah, he should have his own YouTube channel. He said, go ahead, take a drag of water. Mm-hmm. I gotta get the cracker out. Done. Now, take your bourbon, let it hit your lips, and, and just the-, the tip of your tongue. You're not really putting any in your mouth. Okay, so you really just got it right about there. Cool. Now mm-hmm. do the same thing with water. Take a little bit of water, probably like if you're thinking of a water bottle, like a cap's worth, is what I imagined. Mm-hmm. So you got it in there. Now, <laughs> actually take some bourbon in. I would still keep with heavy. I would, and I'm getting a tea note with the water. Mm-hmm. I don't know, well, let's see if that carries through. Yeah. Really cool, really cool thing there from Freddie. All yeah. right, so now let's go back to this since we've gotten some on the uh, old palette. Now let's see what it does with the aromas. I get a little bit of cinnamon. I get some, uh, it's either maple or... I get honey. Butterscotch. A little orange zest. Maybe some walnut? Ooh. There is a different type of wood going on there besides yeah, the oak. Besides oak. It might be a little cedar. Do cedar or walnut? I think it might have been right on. I would say honeysuckle with a with the floral. Instead of honey. Yeah. Hmm, interesting. I think it's honeysuckle. And there's like a light raisin or maybe a fig happening on there. This is normally a little bit more hoity toity than we get on this channel. Yeah, we don't normally go this far. But this but. is fun. Um Let's see. Uh, Grant said yolk, and I have a few of those oyster crackers for my chili. It's a perfect day for chili, Grant. Here, can you catch it? Oh, you didn't catch it. You're supposed to catch it with your mouth. Yeah, come on. Um, yeah, so that's kind of what I would say. So this is a Tennessee product, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, we'll go with that honeysuckle instead of just the honey. I agree now. I get the little bit of floral note in yeah. there. Mm. Oh. Jack says, just moved on to some Mictor's Tenure. So Ooh, good. Ooh, totally agree. Agree. Cheers, Cheers, Jack. Thank you. Um, and yeah, maybe that walnut with the wood. All right. Let's go on to the mouthfeel. I think it's medium full to full body. Yeah, I think so. With a... Finish is still going. Medium high complexity and... I would say medium high complexity and a medium, medium plus, plus finish. finish. Yep. Yeah. Mmm, <laughs> um, black pepper. Yep. Uh, and maybe that anise. Yeah. Um, anise, anise. Anise, anise. I don't know. Mm. Orange ish. A little orange. A little yeah. orange peel in Some there. Some orange zest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, to watch. Someone really dissect bourbon, admittedly, they look like idiots. I still get walnut. Because we're here, we're doing this, we're doing the Kentucky Chew, we're smacking, weird faces, smacking the lips, making noises, blowing out over I your tongue. I still get walnut. I stand by that. No, I'm with you. I'm with you. It's a little dry. A tad, but it, you know, dry can kill it for me. It's not a killer. At I all. would put this, if you ask me which one, I would put it at 110 plus and I would put it between 9 and 14 years if this were blind. Now, I know it's 11 years, and I know it's 118, so I guess that's easier to say now that I know mm-hmm. that. But that's what my guess would have been. I would agree. I, I would, would either put it up between 104 and 109 and 110 plus, which it's 118. I'd put um, 110 plus. Scooter, it, feel, it feels like a foolproof. Late to the party. Cheers. Thanks for the super chat. Cheers to you. Thank you. And, woo, that was a loud one. Thanks for joining. A loud cowbell cheers right underneath this mic for you. Oh, Carl Ivy, if you're out there. I got back to your message about, um, well, you know what it was about uh, on Facebook, so just shoot that back to us. <laughs> Chad's mouth noises, ASMR. What's that mean? A-S-M-R. Someone spell that out for me. I'm not sure about that one. Unless it's nasty and then don't. <laughs> I don't know. 
What are the kids saying? What do the kids say these what do days? The kids, what does the fox say? I don't know. Okay, 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 okay. We all know what the fox says. Um, yeah, I'm with you on the walnut. I think honeysuckle, even in the taste. I think that so. Little bit of that floral a little note. sweet floral. A little, bit yeah. of, uh, a little bit of orange zest. Could be lemon. I could be convinced either way. Not really getting the chocolate on finish or anything. Maybe a fig, cereal honey in that vicinity, but I'm Maybe. still going to go with that floral honeysuckle, yeah, I think. Yeah, agreed. Um, this is good. I mean, overall, just to talk about it instead of dissecting it, this is very solid. You it's all are good. funny. They're, uh... Assuming us... Sarah may read. <laughs> Autonomous sensory meridian response. Okay. Nothing dirty unless you want it to be. Mm. Well, well, you don't know well, me, so... Well... <laughs> yeah. Um... Anyways, just look up moving on. ASMR videos. Yeah, we oh. will have to do that. Oh, jeez. Mmm. Chris from Australia. Howdy. Cheers, mate. Looking forward to seeing you later this year. Mm -hmm. We're counting down the months. Mm -hmm. That we are. That we are. Overall, Pursuit series episode one. It's good. One I like it. Is really good. I enjoy it. And that's that's my... what I wish they would have asked us. Do you like it? Yeah. What What do you think? <laughs> Wait, what are your thoughts on it? Would you drink this again? How would you drink this? I would drink it neat. What do you think this is good for? Do you think it's good for cocktails? Do you think it's good for beginners? Do you think it's a good barrel proof, you know, dessert drink or a before dinner, you know, to make you well, hungry? let's go through that. I think it's too high proof for beginners. Agreed. I think it would probably cut through really well in a cocktail. But, but I wouldn't I put it in a cocktail. I think it's more made for neat drinking. Agreed. Um, it could benefit from a couple drops of water. I don't know. I don't really want to do that. I don't want to do it either. <laughs> we got a half a sample bottle left. We can explore that yeah. later. Um, I think it's great for barrel-proof lovers, for high-proof lovers. What would you pay for this bottle? For this one? No, for a <laughs> bottle of this. What for would 750, you pay? For $7.50? For a fifth? And it's the Pursuit series, so it's like very... You have to keep in mind like... The, Artisanal? <laughs> like if we did a pick, it would be like that. But there's not their pick, it's their label. So what would you pay? Sarah, I would pay upwards of eighty nine ninety five. I was thinking about the eighty dollar range too. Yeah, what, what I would love it if it was around sixty five. I think sixty to sixty five would be like a whoa, this is a deal. Mm -hmm. I'm buying this all day long. But I would pay upwards of eighty nine ninety five plus shipping. Sold American. Well, the price is right, Chad. <laughs> I don't know. So Brian says, I would drink it in a house. I would drink it with a mouse. I would drink it in a box. I would drink it with a fox. But would you drink it with green eggs and ham? Would it pair well? Cheers, Brian. I've never had green eggs. That was synchronicity on that cowbell cheese. It was pretty good, right? I loved it. I loved it. Welcome to Extra Innings because we had technical Eric, difficulties in the beginning. Eric said that was on point with the cost. So good for us. Really? Damn, we're good. Give us that first place trophy. We're coming for you. We're coming for you. I'm a bad man. I'm literally going to make... I'm a bad man. If we make our own one of these, I'm gonna we're going to test each other on it all year long. We're training for the next year. Dun, 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 dun. We're going to run up steps for some reason. Yeah, for some reason. Probably to work off the bourbon and the Wendy's that we <laughs> yeah. drink and eat in between now and then. But. 2019 update. Haven't had Wendy's yet. Right? We haven't had Wendy's yet in 2019. No. no. It's still early. We're 20 days in. 20 Not days, even quite three weeks. 20 days, no Wendy's. And no Jets. And no Jets. Oh, man, we haven't had Jets in a hot minute. I'm fine with that. Let's keep it that way. All right, cool. Um, Chaz has arrived. I think he might have gotten here. Well, full on Chaz, but I'm relaxed. I'm feeling good. He's feeling I've good. I've just been in a really good mood today. I don't know. It's Maybe we, it's because we're off work tomorrow. I think it's because we're off work tomorrow. This we is like Saturday a, number two. We had such an awesome day yesterday. It was literally like a bourbon adventure yesterday. We just yes. got to do so many fun things. Yes. And I will say that uh, 1917 well, Kentucky Tavern that we tasted was exactly a complete was surprise. And like something that I've never experienced before and don't think that we'll ever experience again. Yes. It was like smoky <laughs> and oaky, but it had um, mint and leather and tobacco. It would have been perfect. Like if you like cigars, I think you would want a mild cigar with that one because you wouldn't want to overpower the interesting notes yes. in the cigar. But it was so unique. It was very savory. TNT Blues Corner coming in with the extra innings. We thank you for that, sir. Again, we shall say, check out his YouTube channel. 
on the YouTubes. <laughs> That's where the YouTube channels That's live. That's where it is. I was going to say, yesterday was a bucket list because I didn't know if I would ever get to try something pre-prohibition. Yeah. Like, I thought, okay, maybe if I win the lottery, I'll definitely, you know. Right. But, like, just like normal, without plopping down the money, I don't know if I'd ever try anything pre-prohibition. Mm -hmm. And... There we Yay, go. they said, unto thee it shall happen, and it did. I don't know. I don't and know. you shall be granted with bourbon, and so it and was. And it was good. And it was good. Uh, uh, Jose says, extra overtime and a new port and another nutty. Let's do... Cheers. Thank you, Jose. Cheers to you, sir. Let's Should do... Should we do a Perry pour? No, maybe. <laughs> he laughed in the face of Perry Pours. I laugh in the face of Perry Pours. Let's do a what are you drinking roll call. What are you drinking roll call in the chat now, please. Ooh, and we'll pick something that we have accessible right behind us. Yes. Yes. Go. And go. What are you drinking roll call? Not the best for people watching the replay. It's a delay. Boone County 12 year. Eleanor. Oh. Eleanor 1860. Water. That's the nutty one, right? We love that. The C917. Knob Creek. Uh huh. Buffalo Trace Party Store Pick. JTS Old Ezra Brown. 107. Bookers. Jim Beam. 1792 Foolproof. We just had that. Ooh. Mictors. Brim, Brimstone? Not familiar. Mm -hmm. Wow. Conviction. You guys are drinking all Conviction. kinds of stuff. Look uh, at you. Store Pick Knob Creek. Uh, Eleanor. Elijah Craig Barrel Proof again with 136. We got some a lot Hudson of rare breed. rum cast finish. Couple of bookers. Uh, yeah, rare breed conviction again. Larceny Stag Junior Jim Beam Repeal Batch. I know what I want to do. Diet Dr Pepper. <laughs> Woodford Double Oak. Let's uh, drink out some of this. Whiskey Crusaders. A nineteen eighteen is waiting for you next time you're in Texas. Well, we're gonna be there in October. Kevin. Oh, Matt, you just Whiskey blew our minds. Whiskey Crusaders gets a big cowbell cheers. I actually know what I want to talk about. All right, what are you going to talk about? It's Talking Points with Sarah. It's Talking Points. Blanton's Gold, good for you. Diet Dr. Pepper. <laughs> Coke Zero, hey, that's up Chad's alley. Uh, Rare Breed and Bell Mead next. Actually, do you have some clean blankets? I do. I have two right here and waiting in the wings. Let's do it. So, this is the Knob Creek pick that we did with OBC. It's very recent. Mm -hmm. And it oh, and is coming a, soon. And we have a scotch. Oh. <laughs> Glen Merange. I think we actually have that one. Glen Merange. Can you open this? Oh, wait. It's so tough. These are hard. Ah, Mark just got the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof C918. Have we tried it? Yes. We did try Yet. it. Yes, we have, sir. We will cheers you with this when we get it. Yes. Well, I need um, this for that. We, we have, and we do we do love it. I know Perry loves it. It was one of his uh, favorite pours of 2018. Okay. Okay. What is this? This is the OBC. Oh, yeah. So we helped pick this bottle about three months ago. Yeah. Uh, with OBC Kitchen. Weller 12. Uh, it will be coming out very soon. Scotch, scotch, um, scotch. If it's not already out. And they do sell Art it by Mary. the bottle. At the restaurant, so. No, I don't want to sample Indy. <laughs> Jose. Oh, they're asking Jose if he's tried blackened. All right, sorry. All right. I'm just reading the chat. Hey, look, Jeff Winbush. All right, first we have to cheers to um, Mark. Mark. Cheers. Cheers to you, sir. <coughs> cheers to Mark. All right. Mark Jeff Mark. Winbush. I opened my personalized bottle of Knob Creek Single Barrel on my birthday last Wednesday. Good stuff. Cheers to cheers you to with you, our Jeff. own Knob Creek Single Barrel. There you go. There you go. Um... Do we get a drink now? I mean, we just cheers. And happy birthday, Jeff. Wow. Oh, shut your face. Chaz is here. Welcome, Chaz. <laughs> um, uh, uh, can you be James wow. Lipton and you say, can I speak to Chaz now? No, and I don't know I'll, who that is. Then I'll like go, James Lipton from Inside the Actors Theater? What? If you were to meet God, what would you say? And then, the, you know, it's one of his famous. Uh, Will Ferrell did him on SNL. He had that stack of cards this high. Help me out here, people. Nope. James Lipton, Inside the Actors Theater. You keep repeating the same things, and that's not going to help me understand any James better. Lipton, naughty Jose. Naughty. Now I do feel like... Um, Chaz? Uh, no, I feel like... Um, 
Linda from Bob's Burgers, where she just starts singing things. She does. I want to sing. I want to dance. I want to, you know. Yeah. <laughs> a wine shoe. <laughs> a wine shoe. Yeah. Um, wow. This is. Yeah. See, Sarah, they get it. We're inside right on the, the brink of Sarah with an H. So just, just be patient. Sarah, well, inside the actor's studio, James Lipton. No, I don't know. Will Ferrell, SNL. No. You don't know him either. Stop yelling things at me. I'm not gonna think of it just because you get louder. <laughs> okay. All right. Wow, this is intense. This might be one of the most intense single barrel picks of Knob Creek that I've ever had. How do you feel about it, Chaz? I feel <clears throat> well, Sarah with an H. I feel I'm like I'm not Sarah with an H yet. I, I am still in complete control of myself. I feel like I'm just. I want Chaz to come out. It's more like a Doctor Jekyll, Mister Hyde situation sounds more like the hulk it's a hulk hulk didn't want to come out he's like no todd why are you disappointed because it's not sarah with an h okay. <laughs> no eric eric you get out of here with that we don't even have any red bull so you just get <laughs> you get get on get um they want it i feel like you asked me a question sarah i feel <sighs> like we have become really good selectors single barrels are you saying that we are the best selectors are you saying we're the wild card yep you know what made me really sad is that we got we're asked Mavericks. to go on we got asked to go on a russell's pick on thursday of this coming week and we can't go because you're going to be in florida for work and i'm leaving the next day for chicago ah uh, that's a good point because we completely didn't keep to this uh but it's written as the last thing so next week sarah will not be here i will i'll be in chicago she'll being be, sarah with an h all weekend yeah she'll be in chicago I'll be here. Girls trip, not work trip. Uh, we have Samantha, who is going to guest host with me. You know Sam from our Wild Turkey 101 Uncorking episode. Actually, I don't know about this. She is the host of Harry Potter and the Half Drunk Podcast. So if you like Harry Potter and you like drinking, then this I is mean, the show for you. We're not going to talk about Harry Potter. Well, we probably will. A Maybe bit. just a little. Um, but yeah, she does that and she was on our Wild Turkey 101 Uncorking. So she'll be here next week and it's going to be all about zeroing in on her flavor profile. She obviously loves Wild Turkey 101, but we're gonna be going through other bourbons, like if you like this, continue on to this, you know, type of thing. And through the episode, we're going to be figuring out what her flavor profile is and what she really likes. So if you have any suggestions of, well, you gotta put this one as like a, like a benchmark, like what do you feel about this? Or what do you feel about this? Let us know, you know, let us know. Yep. Um, Carl, Carl Ivy says he Ivy. wants a Bell Mead pour for Chaz and Sarah. That sounds serious, right? It is. Mm. Cheers to you, sir. So you can go get it? I can go get it. Yeah. Um, oh, man. Oh, that is so good. So the thing is, Jason has still asked, are we dress shopping while we're in Chicago? The original plan was yes, to dress shop while we're in Chicago, but then I found my dress and I would show it to you right now, except for I'm afraid, I'm afraid Chad will see the replay and I don't want that. So I don't know of a way to show you guys without him seeing it. <sighs> this is difficult. Hmm. I'm not sure. If you have an idea, it's like we got to blind Chad with the wedding dress. <laughs> How do we make sure he doesn't see it? I'm not entirely sure. Um, but yeah, we're definitely gonna go to Delilah's. Um, we've got all, they've already, my friends already have this planned out. I don't know. I'm just gonna be along for the ride. As long as I have bourbon and we're hanging out, it's gonna be good. I heard it's gonna be like nine degrees though, so I'm not excited about that. I did not do say yes to the dress stuff, but I did stand on a pedestal. That was fun. Um, you only get to do that once in your life and it, it feels kind of weird to be in the spotlight, but it was also interesting. And I guess I just have to say I have like some really supportive friends and family who made that day a lot of fun. Uh, it also helps if you're buzzed. <laughs> Maybe that's why I said yes to that dress. I was feeling pretty good that day. Oh, the champagne? Oh, yeah. Sh champagne followed by bourbon. Yes, it was good. <clears throat> um, so I, I figure like, like Monica will come up with an idea of how to get that image to you guys to see without Chad ever seeing it. And go. <laughs> that's not fair. Why is it not fair? You have to wait. Do we have a a cheers to George? We have a cheers to George to do. All right. Cheers, George. Nutty Squad. Nutty Squad represents. He can be the treasurer. <laughs> I mean, Jose is the president. Jose, assemble your uh, board. <laughs> Nutty Squad, assemble. Charles Ashworth said, invite everyone to the wedding. Charles, I wish we had enough money to invite 17,000 people to our wedding. <laughs> 
But I don't think that there was a venue other than like Rupp Arena <laughs> that we could get that many people into. So let's see. And we don't have enough money to feed all of you guys. I'm uh, sorry. $20 a plate times 17000 We should just be like, if you can pay for your seat and your plate and your food, you can come. I mean, we can charge a mission. We have a limit on the space. We can't. People can't be sitting outside. But if we did get married in Rep Arena and we charged thirty dollars a ticket, this is a terrible idea, Chad. No, <laughs> no. There will be a video. You will be able to see afterwards. I'm sorry we can't invite. I think we're everyone. missing out on a marketing. Listen, opportunity I here. would. Our wedding is not a marketing opportunity. <laughs> but the marketer in me kind of likes your ideas. See? Yeah. Ooh. You will have oh. to wait. Um, and yes, there will be video. Don't you worry. It'll be like the New Orleans video, but with our wedding. Yeah. So we got, per Carl the Legend Ivy's request, we have some Bell Mead cast strength. Um, now this is 116.1 proof of deliciousness. Of deliciousness. So there you go. It's true. What are you clapping about? This. Oh. Nine degrees, that's a heat wave, Chad says. Not you, obviously. <laughs> I, I don't remember um, saying that. Have Chad's eyes removed. That that's a good uh, that's a good solution. Then how will I see her? It'll be like a, a bird box. We'll just blindfold you. <laughs> oh, okay, we'll just bird box it. Yeah. Just bird box that. Um, have we had Bell Mead Black Bell? No, we haven't. I would love to. That sounds delicious. Do they age it in a black bell? You would have to ask Chad Holly. Uh, Perry did see it yesterday. That's true. Chad, close your eyes. No, you're the man, Carl Ivy. All right, so I, I just put it in one glass here. Ooh, a Patreon reveal. Mm. I just finished the Knob Creek. Oh, that's good. That's good. It lacks a nut quality, but. How about if it was catered really by Wendy's? Yes, I would like a frosty cake, please. I An would, ice cream cake made of frosty. I would want Wendy herself there. They're, it's not such a person. Oh. Yeah, it's Dave Thomas's daughter, isn't it? Yeah, but they tried you. Oh, that's right. They tried using her in the commercials and then it backfired. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Live streaming. Yes, we thought about that, but I don't think that's <clears throat> going to work. Where am I? I'm lost in the chat. <laughs> Perry, help us out. Who, who said, can you two kiss? Ben Thompson? For a super chat. <laughs> Not on live. Ew, no, gross. No. We do that after the show. <laughs> Potluck style. Well, okay, so we're doing our Bourbon and Bites uh, engagement party on the 23rd of February at Bell's Cocktail House in Lexington. And it's sort of just open. Like, we're going to buy. We're only charging $25. We're not a charging ticket. anything. We are buying a drink for the first 30 people, and we will have, like, bourbon, you know, like food, just bites, you know, snacks for however many people come. Light bites. We're likely to run out because I don't know how many people are coming. Mm. Um, but if you want to stop by and say hi, like, it's free to get in. You can grab a drink, say hey. Man. It's not an engagement party, so you don't have to bring a gift. That's right. Don't worry. Um, I know there's a lot of Knob Creek picks out there in the world. Maybe Perry could stream the wedding for us on our Instagram story. <laughs> Maybe. But this is an exceptional pick. I know we're biased because we were on the pick, but oh man, this is good. This is good too. We're drinking this for Carl, which is what Sarah has. It's excellent. Two completely different profiles. Mm. Which, which do I have? You have this, this one. Yeah. Mm. I'm about to finish the Knob Creek. So good. Wow, 200 people are still watching me talk about our engagement party. <laughs> wow. Cheers to you guys. You're patient. Damn good. Let's do this. Okay, Perry will do it. I grant Perry permission to live stream. Perry, you've been deemed the <laughs> wedding live streamer. Wow. That's a lot of pressure. That is a lot of pressure. I think it was this one, right? What? Yeah. I'm going to go back and see. If any more people have answered? Yeah. If this has changed any. And... It's loading. Uh, not really. Not really. It's pretty much the same. Yeah. Yeah. More people are scared. Too yeah. much pressure to do a double blind. 46% says, nope, neither tried my... Uh, never tried never my tried. bourbon that's blind. A, a but I want to. Typo, but... Okay. Yeah. Um, Pear Bear's live wedding feed. He'll <laughs> be the host of wedding day. And I'm your host, Perry. Welcome uh, back. He can do like behind the scenes stuff because I doubt either of us will have our phones on us for a long time. So right. 
That'll be fun. Yeah. Okay, Perry. <laughs> I've decided. <laughs> yeah. Buckle up. <laughs> Buckle up, Buttercup. Um. Yeah. There we go. Mm. There we go. There we go. What is this? This is so good. It is. That's an up creek. No, I, I finished the up creek. Oh well, I don't know what you're oh, doing. Oh, this now. is the 1792, I think. He said he's a hundred percent down. Well, you're the sweetest. Yeah, that is really I good. wouldn't trust anyone else to do it, mm. to be honest. Good stuff. Um, we did miss one thing in our agenda. We were going to talk about, just a reminder, about whiskeyambitions.com, where we have... Oh, we didn't uh, do that yet. Yeah, we didn't do it. We have uh, the gray bourbonite tea, the black bourbonite tea. We have the, uh, the bolt tea bourbon. It has electrolytes. It's what whiskey drinkers crave. Uh, we have our engraved rocks glasses, and coming soon are some Glen Cairns. Just still waiting on those, and uh, more stuff coming. So check it out, whiskeyambitions.com. Official home for uh, It's Bourbon Night. Yes, it's true. Boom. Um, so there you go. Oh, gosh. Someone said something else that I wanted to answer. How can Perry do that and be the ring bearer at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> Someone else said, do an engagement party down in Austin, but by that point we'll be married. We can do a married party. When we see, yeah, we can do like a an Austin reception. Yeah. But it'll just be a lot of bourbon. So basically what we're already going to be doing. But sure, we can call it whatever you want. True, true. It's going to be a blast. I'm so excited. I kind of... This is going to be a great year for us. I kind of miss people saying, hey, Chad, there's a chapel in Austin. Yeah, no one says that anymore. <laughs> we can't do it twice. Hmm. We can't renew our vows like 15 days after we got married. The wedding's so nice, we did it we twice. We did it twice. Yeah. <gasps> That's funny. There you go. Yeah. That's very funny. Well. Um, but yeah, I think we've said, oh, yeah. mo looking forward to meeting you in October. Looking forward to meeting you too, Steve. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be a delight. Yes. Uh, what will be the music for your first dance? Jerry Sith, you will just have to wait and watch the wedding video, I think. <laughs> um, a twice-barreled wedding. <laughs> there you go. Y'all are clever. Mm -hmm. I like it. All mm -hmm. right, Sarah with an H is getting here, but I think it's time to go. <laughs> because we're already almost an hour and a half in, although the first 15 minutes or so were plagued by no audio. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah. For sure. I think I'm running out of things to say. Yeah, I think that is the sign that we're ready to wrap it up. But uh, thanks for sticking with us. and Thanks for being patient through the first Thanks for part. being patient for the no audio and the, and the very beginning um well that might be a separate video file i'm not sure how it did it i don't know yeah but anyway that happened so <laughs> so there you go um but yeah thanks guys and we'll see you uh well half of us will see you next sunday oh i won't see you next sunday again it'll be it'll be sam here so we're keeping the male female quotient the same but the sunday after that we plan to start our uh part one of our uh, I guess bourbon virtual trail, bur virtual bourbon trail. bourbon trail tour. Yeah, of so we'll, the we'll be grass. trying a a whiskey from each of the distilleries that it's on the Kentucky Bourbon Trail. And we might throw Buffalo Trace in there too, even though they're not. On the even though they're trail. not, they used to be, and they decided not to be. They don't need, uh, but whatever. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> we'll address that in that video. Um, but we're gonna cut it into two episodes because it's just too much just to cram into one. So that'll be not next week, but the week after that. Next week will be myself and Sam. We'll discover what her bourbon profile is, and maybe some people can learn some things about their own on that journey. Mm -hmm. So we'll Very see, exciting. We, we shall see. So that'll do it for us. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks, Chaz. Okay. <laughs> okay. I said Sarah. Huh? I know you did. And uh, that'll do it for us. Thanks for watching, guys, so much. We really appreciate it. Always fun to hang out with you guys. We will see you next time. And until then, drink more bourbon. And do it blind. And do it blind. <laughs>